Now we'd like to start um, using again a live site. This is a site that's currently in production, so it's still not fully finished, but it is a great candidate to showcase some of this functionality. Uh, we're currently logged in as the administrator. You can usually tell because uh, with newer site Bento solutions, we're adding that yellow box with the administrative menu to the bottom left. It's only available when you have the necessary access rights to edit content. It's sort of an easy way to attract attention to the most important stuff. And right off the bat, you should see the navigation and the tag cloud, which are actually coming out of K2. Again, they're the same component. Um, I feel that the best way to give authors, editors, and the administrators an understanding of how this stuff works together is to dive in sort of into the back end and show you how those pieces play together. So rather than start at the front end, we'll jump to the administrative side. We're logged in, and we've gone to the K2 component. We're greeted with an array of functions, and we're going to work our way backward through them. The very first thing to look at is the user groups. The user groups are designed to set security. An administrator within the Joomla core does not necessarily have the editing rights within K2. That's managed by user groups. In this case, we've actually created a special group called TM Cell Staff. This is a custom group that has specific edit abilities. In fact, we'll change some of those. The two other items are standard with K2. When we jump over to users, you will see that we've added two users. One is an actual user, two is the first is the administrator. Now, by default, administrator did not have the rights to edit anything because it was not listed as a site owner or the custom group we created within K2. It was listed as a registered user. It's important to elevate every person that you might add to Joomla within K2. The common system is great, but we'll save that for another occasion. The tags are sort of a new thing that people are getting used to, and they're a phenomenal way to showcase the more popular content in your website. Um, the simple setup here is this. You create new tags for words, keywords, that are relevant to your content. In this case, we only have two for the time being, Nokia and Motorola. And that's all it is. Those tags are later assigned to items which we'll see in a moment. The categories are critical. The categories are what organize the content, also interplay together. Now you will notice that we have a products and services category with two child items, products and services. We did that for a very specific reason. We wanted a particular type of output on the website when you click on products and services. We wanted a um, icons for the different branches so then you can dive in and dig deeper. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's an option. It's just a trick that you can use along with many others to customize how that information is displayed. When you click on any particular category, you're given a slew of control options. Outside of the normal stuff, which is the title, the aliases, the descriptions, the image for the category, you have this giant parameters list which control how the information is going to play on the site. For now, we'll leave templating alone. Templating is, again, another more advanced function of K2, which is already a step above the things that most users are used to, uh, but it allows to customize how content is displayed. The formatting options are incredibly useful because they determine how large the pictures are going to be when the images are displayed for the different items and in the number of columns they appear in. Let's take a look how the columns impact content because it's a very common question we get. I'm going to change this one to a two and hit apply. What that does is it adds a second column for part of the display within the website. We know we're working within products category, so I'm going to jump in to that area. If I hit refresh on the products and the set reloads, the next set of articles would attempt to break down into two columns because our template's not l wide enough and the pictures are very large we see an overlap. It's usually a bad effect. Um, it doesn't really work unless you're using small photos. So typically avoided, but it's a default setting. When K2 is installed, all categories shift to two columns on the primary 
items. So it's important to know that that setting exists and it can be changed. We're going to revert that back to a 1. There's a lot more properties here. Um, we're not going to go into those in detail. The only thing you want to know is that these properties exist and should be paid attention to. It is in your best interest to go through, point to every item and read the help descriptor that comes up, and see what you can learn about the functionality. A lot of them are self-explanatory. Then we have the items. The items are obviously the meat of your website. This is, this is the replacement for articles that you'd normally use. We can actually bring over articles from Joomla. We're not going to do that. We're going to be creating our own right here. And within the items, we're given a slew of abilities. Again, typical to all K2 components, including the modules, or I should say, typical, typical of all the K2 pieces, you're given a lot of parameters that you can control. Item tags are simple. Metadata meta information is pretty standard, as well as a lot of um, display options. You've already noticed on the pre previous screen, <laughs> even more item options. Uh, all of this controls how the item will display on the screen for the user. We can do them on category level, or we can do them on the item level. In addition, we have the image tab, which allows you to add specific images for articles. Then the image gallery, which uses the simple image gallery from Joomla Works. You take a zip file with your JPEGs or PNG files and upload it. It's processed by the system and attributed to the article. Again, probably worth looking to see how it actually displays. We'll jump back to the K2 Joomla Works uh, demo and scroll down. The image gallery is right below. Three small thumbnails. When you click on one, you're given the, sli uh, the slide option and the image is enlarged. Pretty cool effect. It's great that you can accomplish this by simply zipping up a bunch of files and sending them up. Then you have the video, which in this case we have turned off. We have no extra fields and uh, no attachments currently be are being utilized. You can learn more about them by looking at the demo or talking to us, but just know that these, func this, these functionalities actually exist and they may be useful in your application. We're going get to out, get out of this article now. Lastly, we have the parameters for the K2 system itself. Um, these are the general parameters, which usually should be set in the beginning as you're starting to deploy the system. They deal with as simple things as sizing and imaging the thumbnails to what's typically displayed. In this particular case, we didn't want comments, so we have the commenting system disabled on the global scale. We have additional functionality for social networking and a whole bunch of other things that are just, again, things you should look at when you're working within the system. Jumping back, we're going to refresh this page because we don't want that dual column layout. We've already made that change and we're back inside our items. The next thing to cover is really the front end editor which is simple. You log in using the K2 login. We already are. You get the edit item if you have the right permissions. When you click on it, you're given the really pretty Ajax editor with essentially the same functionality minus a few settings that we just covered a moment ago. I haven't had a chance to talk about the item tags. Um, they're incredibly useful, so this is a good time to do it. We have four articles on this particular website that are tagged with Nokia and one Motorola. If you notice in the tag cloud, we have two tags, a small and a large one, Nokia being large. It basically means that the larger the item is, the more things are tagged with it, the more popular that particular keyword or tag is throughout the website. It's sort of a novel thing. It's becoming very common uh, within blogs specifically to see tag clouds sort of a new way to visually organize your information. We recommend you use it. People are starting to get used to it.